Oh yes, let's max out this XPS 17 with 64 gigs, baby, and let's see what happens. This is how much RAM do you need, version 2, because I've already made a video on this. I'll leave a link in the description to that video, it's quite popular. But some things have changed. Me, personally, I've gone up to 6K in HDR and stuff like that. Games like Flight Simulator just, yeah, needed more than 16 gigs. We're going to talk about how much RAM you need in your laptop, desktop, whatever, for what sort of purpose and what happens to your system if you don't have enough RAM. I'm going to give you some proof, some content creation benchmarks that shows you the difference between 64 and 16 gigs and you'll be surprised. I was surprised and it's not just, you know, overall system performance. It actually helped out the GPU. I never thought that would happen. So make sure you stay to the end to watch those benchmarks. But have a look at the game in here. Some of my epic flying flight simulator. I was shocked. You know, I was nearly losing 32 gigs. And I reckon even you need more than 32 gigs if you're going to go 4K Ultra with Flight Sim. And I think everybody, you know, generally says 16 gigs is perfect for gaming. Well, I don't think that's the case anymore. I think over the next couple of years, especially with the new graphics cards coming out, if Flight Simulator is anything to go by, I think 16 gigs is going to be minimum now. I think you do need 32 gigs especially if you have any ambition to go over 1080p. And that goes for video memory too, right? 8 gigs isn't enough these days. 4 gigs, yeah, all right, maybe for 1080p, you know, high settings. But if you want ultra in some games, 4 gigs isn't enough for 1080p even. And if you're going 1440p 4K, I think 16 is the minimum now. I think 8 gigs isn't enough video memory. So these new graphics cards can't come out soon enough. And I was shocked that even playing 1080p on Flight Simulator that sometimes if I was in like a really densely populated city and stuff, yeah, I was maxing out that 16 gigs memory. And as you'll see later, more system memory can actually help out the GPU as well. So the story goes, I bought a MacBook Pro 16 Started the year, I thought I'll get the 16 gig. It was a really good discount. It was the 16 gig model, so 16 gigabytes RAM, i9, you know, had the 5500. And I thought, I'll get that. I got it on the good discount. That should be fine, 16 gigs. And I'll spend a bit more on the next MacBook Pro with a HDR display and 10th generation CPUs and Wi-Fi 6, etc. Well, that didn't last long because I was hitting the RAM limit on that. And I'd have 4K content, GH4, Panasonic GH4. That's what I was using at the time. And I was hitting constantly swap. So if you don't know, when you run out of memory, your system will try and memory manage and actually put some of the stuff that's in memory put it on your hard disk or ssd hopefully you have one of those now, ssds are fast but still it still slows stuff down and even just opening an app your system might put stuff to the ssd just to allow your system more ram to actually use the application you just opened and it's not ideal having anything in swap sometimes it is just reserving you know more ram for you so you can get your stuff done but sometimes it's going to slow you down as well you know, if you're coming off the hard disk and assets or data's having to go off your hard disk or SSD into your memory and back and forth, it's going to slow you down. And that's what was happening with me. You know, the 4K content, when I color grade, add the LUT and all that sort of stuff, I was easily hitting 16 gigs. And I actually regret now only getting a 32 gig model with my MacBook Pro 16 because... With 6K, HDR, you know, 10-bit, LUT applied, Photoshop open and this and that, I can max out 32 gigs now. And you can't upgrade the memory in the Mac. And I wish I had 64 gigs in it. Now, the good thing about XPS 17 or, you know, laptops, XPS 15, whatever, a lot of the Windows laptops, you can upgrade the RAM, so it's not an issue. But if you've got, like, a MacBook Pro, go for the RAM first, just max out that RAM. I will say I do know people that have a MacBook Pro 13, have 8 gigabytes of RAM and, you know, do vlogs and stuff like that and they make it work and they say it's fine. I guess they're using 1080p content off their phone or even whatever off some sort of camera. It's not sort of heavy duty stuff. I guess you can get it done with 8 gigs, but I do recommend 8 gigs only for like, you know, light editing, 1080p web browsing, that sort of stuff. I think 16 gigs is a good starting point for content creation and gaming. But if your demands are getting more than 4K and you're going to get into heavy duty games and you want to play more than 1080p, I think you have to go to 32 gigs. Now, ideally, 64 if you're a heavy duty user. You know, you're using 4, 6K, 8K. 
you're going to be playing 4K gaming or 1440p ultra settings. I think 32 is fine for gaming, but definitely like hardcore content creation, you're going to want that 64 gigs, even more if you've got a desktop. Because I was surprised the big difference between 16 and 64 gigs with the benchmarks I'm going to show you soon. And I've noticed that I actually can run into swap just with my 6K content, you know, using Premiere, maybe have Photoshop open, Audition open at the same sort of time. I can easily get up there to 32 gigs. So yeah, let's get into the benchmarks and let's have a look. All right, so let's have a look at the evidence here of 64 gigs, which is on the right. Obviously, you can see the score is higher and the 16 gigs on the left, XPS 17, as I said, same specs, you know, 1650 Ti. The only difference is, yes, 16 gigs versus 64 gigs. It's literally the same machine. So have a look there. There's a massive difference with the 64 gigs, right? Look at the filter score. The filter score is 93 versus 77. So this might be something like Panorama, you know, loading all those files into, you know, memory and then, you know, stitching the Panorama together. There is a big difference in Photoshop. General score as well, 54 versus 65. And have a look at the GPU score. Interestingly, the same GPU, but you're getting a better GPU score with the XPS 17 with 64 gigs in it. And I think this is like, it's not having to wait for stuff to be coming off the disk because everything's in RAM and it's super fast to, you know, to access that sort of assets there in the RAM. Having more system RAM just helps out the overall system. It's not just, you know, the CPU. We have an impact on the GPU, which is very surprising to me. I did not expect that. All right, now let's get into our After Effects. And as you can see on the right there, the XPS 17 with 64 gigs is quite a lot faster in a lot of things. 822 versus 744 overall score. But have a look at the tracking score. It's 24% faster. If it's scaled like that, you know, 86 versus 100, you know, rendering score it helps out as well, having more RAM. RAM preview, I would have expected that to be better. It still is faster, you know, 70, well, let's say 75 versus 72, but I thought RAM preview would have got a lot better. And if we have a look at the GPU score again, we're scoring higher with the GPU score having 64 gig system memory. It just helps out overall again. But the big standout there is the tracking score. That's a big difference, right? And even the render score, yeah, that's amazing. Now let's get into Premiere Pro. And as you can see, Wolf again, you know, 508 versus 536. Now the big winner here is the playback score. And you might think, you know, 51 versus 55, that's not that much. That's pushing, what, 7% or something like that. And this performance increased with 64 gigs. If I was actually to run the extended test, the score would just increase. You know, the gap would just get wider. But even in this standard test, you're getting better playback. GPU is the same in this one, so you're not getting any boost with the GPU. But even with exports too, just having that extra bit of RAM there. So there you have it. I mean, you can see it. I can see it in gaming too with Flight Simulator. I think 32 is still the sweet spot now, but 16 gigs... If you're dealing with, you know, HDR, 4K, high frame rate, 4K, After Effects, Photoshop, 32 is the sweet spot. The more RAM, the better. It's just going to perform better the more RAM you give it. You're sending those tests. For gaming too, I think you want 32 gigs now. If you're thinking of, you know, titles that are going to come out in the next few years, I would like to actually know your experience with your laptop or desktop or whatever. Let me know down there in the comments what sort of system RAM you have, what GPU you have, what video memory you have, and tell me your experience. I really want to know that. So anyway, we'll wrap this up. Honestly, now that I'm dealing with 6K HDR and even for gaming, I'm going to have to go to 64 gigs now. I do regret I didn't get 64 gigs in my MacBook Pro. So that is what it is. Catch in the next one. Tally ho.